Hey, you! Do you remember the last few episodes when we talked about how cheap anamorphaking is, looked over off-the-shelf solutions, and deep-dived into street flares? If you don't, make sure to go back and catch up. Anyway, in the last video, I promised we'd get to lens modding, so here we go. The time has come to open up the lenses and create our own set of anamorphakes. I chose EF as the standard mount for all of these tutorials because it has such a long flange distance that you can adapt them to almost any other camera system. Plus, lots of Reds and Alexas have EF mounts, so I would call it a budget PL. Before we start opening lenses, remember the previous video and have everything ready at your workstation. Get all of your tools within reach and work on one lens at a time. Take notes where each piece comes from and its orientation so the process of rebuilding is orderly. We'll modify the 14, 24, 35, 50, 85, and 135 millimeter lenses. I might add others to this lineup, but these are the original set. So make sure you have your oval inserts ready for the lens you're modifying. You can get them at my store if you don't have them yet. The link is in the description. The Semiang or Rokinon Cine DS lenses are excellent candidates for anamorphaking. They are fairly cheap, always available, have a good construction, feature focus and iris gears, and deliver great image quality. I was pleasantly surprised when I opened them up because they have super straightforward insides that will get you in and out in no time. Their only downside is that we'll be mainly attaching the ovals to elements that have to be screwed or rotated back into place. This means that getting perfect alignment might require a few attempts. All these mods start with the same steps. Focus the lens to infinity, take out the screws that hold the mount in place, note how the mount is positioned to the rest of the lens, then take it out to access the inside of the body and rear groups. I'm modifying a handful of lenses in this video, so check the marks on the timeline to find the ones you're looking for. Now, shall we get on with it? Get on with what? The 14 millimeters in this set is an oddball. It is fantastic for its price, but the mod does not do much for it in the sake of making it look anamorphic. You need a hardcore composition in order to showcase the ovals. In any case, just having ovals installed is enough to create the feeling that something is different with the out of focus areas. And that is why I included it in this list. Once you remove the lens mount, note the marking for focus and aperture on the body. Follow a straight line from it and place a small tape triangle on the rear group. This will be key to aligning the oval insert later. Get a good grip of the rear group and screw it out. Then set it aside. The mark we placed on the rear group is roughly perpendicular to the lens's orientation when mounted to the camera. This means we'll align the oval using its narrowest opening. Using two very small and thin pieces of double-sided tape, Tape the edges of the oval insert and overlay them inside the rear group. And the tape should only touch the housing edges, never the glass. And put this in. The Semiang 16mm is a less popular choice than the original 14mm wide angle they offered. This offers a slightly less distorted perspective, yet encompassing a great field of view. The T2.6 maximum aperture is slightly more than a third of a stop faster than the T3.1 from the 14mm. Again, it's hard to see the ovals popping, but the reshaped out of focus areas can play into your viewers' minds, along with the other focal lengths that feature more pronounced bokeh. Just like the 14mm, when the mount is out, Mark alignment on the rear group with a small tape triangle. Once you place the tape triangle on the rear group, get a firm grip and twist it out. This lens also has a bunch of shims inside 
they can be a little annoying to deal with, so just be careful with them. The mark we placed on the rear group is roughly perpendicular to the lens's orientation when mounted to a camera. This is our guide to aligning the oval. Use small and thin pieces of double-sided tape or electrical tape to secure the edges of the oval insert to the inside part of the rear group. The tape should only touch the housing edges, never the glass. Then, screw this back in position and reinstall the mount. The 24mm was the first lens that I anamorphaked in this set, months before the other ones. And this was for the This Is Scope video. It is a solid wide angle with super fast aperture, meaning that even after the oval cuts down a stop, you will still get very pronounced bokeh for the out of focus areas. Just like we did with the 14 millimeters, once the mount is removed, use the lens's markings to place a piece of tape onto the rear group. Then get a good grip and screw the group out. Following the tape mark, attach the oval to the inside of the rear group using two tiny strips of double-sided tape. The oval should be perpendicular to the tape marking for alignment. Also, make sure that the double-sided tape only sticks to the metal edges of the housing and not to the glass itself. Then, screw the rear group back in and if your lens has this tab on it, it controls the aperture and you want to hook it on the little pin inside of the lens. Now, when this rotates, the aperture is controlled. Oh, that's it. That's the end, I guess. I guess that's the end. This 35 millimeters is a very versatile lens. It has great minimum focus reach and featuring a fast aperture, this boosts bokeh for the smart filmmaker. 35 millimeters is a mandatory focal length in any set, acting as a normal lens on super 35 cameras and a mild wide angle on full frame. The insides of the 35 millimeter are almost identical to the 24 mil. They have roughly the same size and build, so the steps are the same. We're gonna make a mark that is perpendicular to this, and for that I'm gonna use red tape. Once the mount is out, follow the lens's markings to put a small triangle tape onto the rear group. Then unscrew the rear group out of the body, giving you access to the aperture mechanism. Following the triangle tape mark, connect the oval to the back side that faces the aperture. Once the oval is aligned with our triangle mark, use two tiny strips of double-sided tape to secure it. Once more, making sure they only stick to the housing and not the glass. We can screw it back into position and reinstall the mount. We're now stepping into big bokeh territory. This 50 T1.5 delivers great out of focus highlights. Great for medium and close up shots. This lens will give you a lot of that anamorphic character that you're after, but not much distortion. This lens will have people wondering how you got the look. This lens has two approaches, a simple one and a more challenging one. In this video, I'll only cover the simple one, although you can find the challenging approach on the written guide. I feel a bit trapped in Groundhog Day with this set of mods. Once the mount is out, mark the rear element, then unscrew it out. This one is shaped like a cup, and you can reach all the way inside. Place the oval at the very back, and secure it using little pieces of electrical tape on the sides. And now we're gonna screw this back. Any 85 millimeters is a great lens for portraits and close-ups. A fast aperture 85 mil only does it in a dreamier way, creating more separation between subject and background. Kick up a notch in production value by having oval bouquet on the background. This is also the territory where too fast of an aperture can make focus pulling a real challenge. After you remove the mount, 
go ahead and remove the little locking ring on the back. Carefully, turn the lens upside down with your hand underneath it. So all of the elements come out safely. Or if you prefer, you can use the suction tool to get the elements out. There are two glass groups and a spacer. Keep track of their order and their layers for when you're putting them back together so nothing goes in backwards. Now I'm gonna see where this aligns to the camera. Again, it's going to align with the Rokinon mark. With a stack of elements out of the way, you can get a clean view of the aperture and place the oval insert right there, aligning it by eye with the lens markings. Once the oval is in position, you can rotate it using the lens wrench or your screwdriver. Put the elements and the locking ring back into place. The glasses and spacer can get slightly jammed depending on their angle of insertion, so I recommend putting them back one at a time as straight down as you can. If they get stuck, free them with a little encouragement from the lens wrench on the side that's higher or that's tilted. Or if you're using this handy suction tool, you don't even have to worry about that. If the 85 millimeters was already a great performer with the oval inserts, the 135 absolutely shines. With the compression created by the longer focal length, backgrounds either melt away in beautiful bokeh for close-up shots, or they show clear stretched out defocus on wider compositions. The little flying cotton fluffs turn into floating ovals because of the focal length. After taking a break with the tape marks for the 85mm, we are back at it. Now that the mount has been removed, mark where the rear group aligns with the lens body and unscrew it out. Add the oval insert to the innermost side facing the aperture. No surprises here, keep doing the two little strips of double-sided tape process aiming for the housing edges around the glass element. The glass element here bulges out a bit, so the oval will touch it and bend around it. That is expected, and it's safe. Okay. Once that is done, you are ready to close the lens back up. Screw the rear group into place and reinstall the mount, but beware we are probably opening it back up again. The chances that the oval is perfectly aligned are slim. To speed up this process, lock the mount with just one screw and put the lens on your camera. Use bright scenes to check the ovals by setting the lens at minimum focus and watching bokeh, or twinkly lights, which are cheap to buy and easy to set up. Check the oval bokeh alignment. If needed, remove the mount again and then twist the oval insert in the required direction to make it straight. Once you are happy with the results, close the lens and lock the mount with all three screws. To give you some reference, I had to open and align the oval at least three times for each lens in this set that uses this process. When you're done with one, move on to the next. See you soon and happy modding. Chit out.